Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be putting one topic to bed finally. This has something that you see it in many articles, many reputable websites, I would say. But today we're going to be going back to the original book, open the page, and actually see what it says. So today's topic is the famous Kataguruma incident. Now, just like you see in a lot of articles, it's briefly mentioned but there is a crucial word that in my opinion it should have been added because in my opinion it changes everything so Kano was very much into seeing what the West had to offer like Herbert Spencer also noting his own journal sometimes in English so what we will be doing today is going through that book you see in front of you this is actually my book it's well over a thousand pages it's Dai Nippon Judo Shi, so the Judo history of Great Japan or the Great Japanese Judo history. So we will go into it and I don't know if you can see it, there's a little yellow circle. I actually circled it myself, so you see Kano as a child. So it's in the first paragraph, the story. We all know that the guy's name was Fukushima, he wanted to beat him. Even in his sleep, he thought about it. So he went to the studies and found a sumo book and also Western physical education book, which had, and this is the word that they use, kento, which translates to fist fighting. You see the kanji for the fist and the kanji for the fight. Now, if you think about it, makes no sense however this is the word used for pugilism and this is great because if you think about it pugilism had a huge history when it comes to how it became english boxing today wrestling in general has a very diverse uh, history and stories you have the napoleonic soldier who says let's only grab above the waist and no striking, which is, became Greco-Roman. You have also folk style, which is a little bit like catch wrestling, but without the uh, locks um, and so many things. But to say pugilism, in my opinion, changes a lot. And it's great because uh, this is something that uh, we've debated so many times. Uh, he studied wrestling. No, wrestling there's another word for it. They even say they use the Western world word wrestling, wrestling. They they use the katakana characters. Katakana is used for uh, foreign words. So even boxing, they they say boxing. So uh, they they use the kanji's kento, so fist fighting. So to refer to pugilism, which is again great. So it's not. The, the catch wrestling or no it's pugilism that was incredibly wild at the time keep in mind Kano was uh, very young this was in the 18 I would say late 1870s early 1880s uh, right before he started uh, the Kodokan and um, now I know what a lot of you are gonna say wow Kataguruma comes from pugilism no look at all the manuscripts of old jujitsu you see so many Koryus doing it in some type of variation. Mekugi did a brilliant presentation showing all the different Jiu-Jitsu schools uh, with their different variations, even Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, and also Sumo. Sumo is one of the oldest that also had variation with the leg and without the leg. You can still find them today, but I do believe it was maybe some type of entry, maybe some type of variation. Kataguruma is one of the most diverse uh, throw, one of the richest in terms of variation. Even today, if you can look at this, you we are still finding out ways to either not grab the leg, to have the most impact possible, the most unbalancing, uh, to lift someone up without even the use of the leg. Just so many ways that we are having it. Um, even me, I was watching this freestyle video and this uh, woman, she was teaching the f fireman scary. And when she fails, she transitions into a dump. 
So she wraps the arm around her shoulder and neck and she steps out and rolls herself. She doesn't just collapse and roll like judokas do and she did something that's brilliant and I went out and I did it when my own failed. So even now we are still studying it and even now it's still evolving with endless variations. So I do believe with all the jujitsu variations, with the lack of the gi, etc., he looked for some type of variation or some type of entry that helped him. I really wish they went more into details, but later they talked about the sleeve and how he uh, used it, and of course the pants instead of the hakama. But um, they said in the book, and I quote, uh, which became the predecessor of kata guruma. So uh, even within the realm of kodokan judo, we can see it's still evolving, but you know, carrying someone over your shoulders it's nothing new but to say that they did not know about it that's not the case there's so many evidence saying that they themselves knew of, of this throw in old jujitsu so you know, translation is really a tricky thing just one great example of the bible and um, when it comes to languages like japanese chinese there's just so much that can go wrong and Here's the thing about a translation. Translation is not, you know, this word says this, and then after, after, and then you put it out. That's not how it works. Um, you have to take into consideration some words had cultural significance, even though it might mean just something basic. All these things have to be kept in mind. So you're not actually transmitting the content of the text, but you're actually transmitting the meaning itself. You will write it in your own way, of course, describing the events word for word, but the, the meaning is up to you to transmit it. So one great example is subtitling movies. When you subtitle movies, you don't put word for word, never. You never do that because uh, there is urban terms, there is uh, things that are just doesn't exist in the other language. For example, I myself subtitle uh, Japanese movies to French and it's a chore because you don't have to linguistically uh, transmit everything you you transmit the meaning I'll give you an example there's a scene um, where one woman stands up and yells at the whole room she says urusai urusai word for word means noise or noisy and uh, it's a you know when you're mad and you want to silence someone you say you say this but in French, we say silence, or in English, silence. And I put silence, of course. I'm not going to put bruit or noise, because it makes no sense in French. But I transmitted the meaning. Now, linguistically, I was wrong. But in terms of transmitting the meaning, that's what you should do. So translation is a very uh, difficult uh, topic uh, or a job to do, whether it's movies, books. but. Uh, it's it's very fun and um, there's just a lot of things that uh, I'm looking forward to doing in terms of judo and you know uh, stay tuned this was Shadi and thank you for listening